Hey guys, so in previous lecture, we are already done discussing first four questions which are asked in 2014, 15 and 16 paper. Now we'll start discussing this particular two questions that is discuss the different types of facts with respect to majors stored in fact table in a data warehouse and explain various types of additivity of facts with example. So what do you mean by facts? Facts is some numbers or some majors. For uh, <clears throat> we can take any example for example if I say what is the result of uh, TYBACIT semester 6 students for this particular year so someone says it is 60% students cleared or 70% cleared so that is some facts which we can store in some ways and the same way that we can use for future statistics or for future analysis of our BACIT course. I hope this particular point is clear. So let's start discussing some uh, examples for the same. So facts that is something which is measured and typically numeric value. Remember it is always a numerical value. Some numbers that can be aggregated. Aggregated means we can find out average from those numbers, we can sum those numbers, we can uh, find minimum or maximum about those numbers or a uh, few other things. So following three types of facts we basically talk about or we can say additivity of our facts. So first is additivity that is fact that are additive across all dimension. What we mean by dimension? Um, suppose if I talk about if I want to book a movie ticket then what are the dimensions we are going to cover there first uh, first that is movie name second movie timing date then which show or we can say which place and which are the seats we required so here we are talking about multiple dimensions and if we add all this dimension then only it is possible to book a movie ticket. So all these dimensions basically plays a big role while booking a ticket and hence these dimensions are additive in nature. That means we can add these dimensions, make a addition of this dimension and as a result we can book a ticket, train ticket, bus ticket, uh, flight we can book or some other types of the same things. So additivity. Dimensions as we already know dimensions we have time dimension, product, sales dimension we can talk about. So those all are dimensions. So as and when our way of project or our pattern changes, dimensions also changes. Then next is semi-additive. That means we are not going to add all the dimensions. Fact that are additive across some of the dimension but not all. And non-additive means not a single dimension can add across. So fact that are not additive across any dimension. Now let's talk about additivity fact. This particular point uh, you can just read it out. It is very simple. So let's talk uh, this examples. So as you can see additivity for example time and that point of time how many customers we have then those customers are interested in which type of product or items at what location and in which branch and what is the total sales amount. So this all are dimensions which we can add. I hope this particular point is clear. So the sales amount can be summed up over all the dimension for example time, customer, item, location. The sales amount can be summed up over all dimensions. So I hope this particular points are clear. Uh, sorry this point is repeated twice. You can just neglect it. Then when we talk about semi-additive. So semi-additive means us suppose a bank store current a uh, bank stores current balance by accounts by end of each day. So here what information we require date, account and what is the current balance. So here we are not adding all the information with respect to that account holder. Only few dimensions we are going to add here and hence it is called as semi-additive. Now next is non-additive. So if we talk about non-additive means a time, customer, item, location, branch and price. So the price cannot be summed up across any dimension. So I cannot decide uh, like uh, whenever we talk about standard product their price is basically based on their MRP. I cannot say that if I am selling some product in Borivli or in Virar then I can uh, cost it at uh, or I can 
uh, provide it at a cheaper price and if i am selling the same product at bandra or uh, at church gate then i'm i'm going to cost it more no so at this point of time this particular uh, facts or this particular dimensions are non additive and hence it is called as non additive remember additive name itself suggest additive add add means addition if we can add some dimensions then it is additive if we cannot add all the dimensions only few dimensions then it is called as semi additive and if we cannot add any dimension then it is non additive i hope this particular point is clear and this is the answer for this two questions which is asked in two different years one is 2016 and 1415 so this particular question becomes also most important why because in all this three years it is repeated let's discuss next question now so here as you can see next question that is star schema remember uh, in university you will always find one or the other question or star schema or snowflake schema or any different types of schemas so uh, what is schema before that we should have understand a uh, basic understanding about database so what is database collection of tables now in uh, a collection of tables we have uh, tables of different entities or of different category for example if i talk about college database then we have a uh, different table which belongs to students employees that is teaching staff non teaching staff then uh, we have some sponsors to that college then many different tables we have out of this all table if we collect some table based on some specific category for example from college database out of multiple table if i am only segregating tables with respect to students then that is called as schema remember tables segregating based on some specific category that is called as schema now when we arrange it in a star uh, fashion then it is called as star schema so let's just discuss about it a star schema architecture is the simplest data warehouse it is called star because diagram resembles a star only which points uh, radiating from center so in center we have some central table and that table is collect, uh, connected with all the other table uh, in a relational manner for example primary key foreign key table wise so the, this particular first paragraph is very simple you can just read it out let's start discussing the main thing which we require to understand so here as you can see i have listed out a diagram here so we have a fact table here now this is the primary table now this primary table is basically linked with many different dimensions as you can see we have a uh, five dimension which are linked to it this dimension here we have primary key which is linked it here so it is basically relational dbms which we already discuss uh, which we have already studied in previous years same way in second dimension also we have one uh, particular column which is primary key that is also linked here same way third fourth fifth dimension so let's discuss what this dimension table is all about so here as you can see what is dimension table and what is fact table as we know what is fact which stores some numeric values so a fact table typically has two types of column foreign key two dimension table and majors those that contains numeric fact remember numeric fact it might be some uh, marks of some subject percentage of some subject or any other things the fact table contains fact data on detail or aggregate level aggregate means mean max average sum count those type of things dimension table a dimension is a structure usually composed of one or more hierarchies hierarchy means a tree structure if a dimension hasn't a hierarchy and level it is called as flat dimension or less the primary key of each of this dimension table are part of composite primary key what we mean by composite primary key if we have two primary key and one table then that is called as composite primary key remember a dimension attribute helps to describe dimension value they are normally descriptive textual value that means it is always going to be some uh, string or some statements with respect to some category i hope this particular point is clear and a typical difference as you can see a fact table store data about cells while dimension table stores geographic region for example which market which cities which clients which product which time which are the channels which we are using and some characteristics which we have to remember with respect to star schema 
so as as we just uh, studied this particular diagram so it looks very easy it is very easy to understand as well this particular diagram so it is very simple that is what we are going to write it here so simple structure easy to understand great query effective small number of tables to join relatively long time of loading data into dimension table denormalization means we are uh, we are or uh, normalization means dividing one table into different sub tables and denormalization means uh, basically we are going to collect or combining two or more table into one table redundancy data cause that size of table could be large redundancy means duplication of a data the most commonly used in the data warehouse implementation is widely supported by large number of business intelligence tools so this particular part star schema is used by many different uh, businesses as well so i i hope this particular point is clear now let's start discussing next part this is one of a quite tricky question uh, many student confused during this particular time uh, last year so why a dimension is called slowly changing dimension now what we mean by dimension as we discuss we have multiple dimension if we talk about booking a movie ticket then we have dimension like what time then which show which place which movie these all are dimensions so data warehouse stores historical data for oltp system that is online transaction as new data is extracted into data warehouse from source oltp some records may change when attribute of a given dimension table changes it is called slowly changing dimensions so let's start discussing you can just read out this it is very simple once we discuss the main part then you can easily understand it so in a slowly changing dimension we have three types slowly changing dimension the first is this method overrides the existing value with a new value and does not retain history remember it does not retain history so uh, if i talk about a movie so uh, if we talk about some multiplex so which movie uh, which movie they have labeled for today or tomorrow so they don't need to keep history of all the movies which they have labeled there or uh, or which movies they were playing uh, before one week or before 10 days or before 20 50 days 100 days so they don't need to make or retain any history here so slowly changing dimension means as and when new movie comes they just remove old movies and over that they start playing a new movie on the same screens then slowly changing dimension type 2 this method adds a new row for a new value maintain the existing row of historical and reporting purpose so this may uh, this second type can maintains history and third type is this method creates new current value column in existing record but retains original column so it basically creates new column as you can see the method basically creates a new current value column in existing record but it also retains the original column so first type it does not retains history it overrides new data on existing data second it retains history or it maintains history and third it basically creates a new column for a current value and as well as it also maintains the original data now we'll just discuss about this third type and then we'll discuss second and first and second types so as you as we know that uh, uh, in uh, type 3 it is slowly changing when column in existing uh, record but retains the original column so let's take a uh, example in slowly it is useful for sales force realignment when name of a sales region has changed but there is a need to state today's sales in terms of past region names for comparison so for example uh, we have uh, mumbai current city is now before it was bombay so if we want to handle some records then we should have that particular part as well so we are going to maintain bombay and some records with respect to bombay as well as mumbai as well so as we know our stock exchange name is uh, still bombay stock exchange so if some things are happening there then we should have that name also labeled with it a new field that sales dimension table named current region is added the old name can be renamed to previous region and no changes are made to sales dimension i hope this particular point is clear now let's discuss first type so first type as you can see type 1 slowly changing dimension so we have this product 
table and here we have target so this is source this is target so from one location we are uh, uh, sending it to some other another location so in this particular table you can just draw any dummy table like this so we have product name product id and product description so here we have described first it was described as a glue but then we change it and we made it pasted here as some new name so as you can see now glue is named as paste so the older information type 1 we do not give old information and hence we are going to change it to paste now so as you can see this is the new target table now here you do not find glue name anywhere in this particular column uh, sorry in this particular row so this is what we mean by type 1 and same things I have listed out here as well so as you can see in type 1 slowly changing uh, when we uh, come up with a new we do not maintain history that is what we mean by this so I hope this particular points you can just read it out it is very 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 simple uh, I have listed out example also a company that manufacture cardboard boxes might have a product dimension table that tracks the product ID product name product description similar column would be present in warehouse product dimension with addition of a surrogate surrogate ID means primary key to track each unique record and then the example which we have just discussed uh, from that diagram the same is written here as well so now let's start discussing second one so here is our second type as you can see in second type what is second type slowly changing dimension in second type we keep new record as well as history we maintain history as well so as you can see uh, we have one source table and then we have one target table both table names are product only so here we have uh, changed something from a glue to a paste and same we have mentioned here as well so as you can see on which day we have made a changes here that is also we have mentioned so let's just discuss about it remember the only difference between type 1 and type 2 type 1 does not keep maintain history or retain history type 2 retains history we can give same example that's it so type 2 is most common type of slowly changing dimension because it enables you to track historical significant attributes the old records point to all historical prior to least latest changes and the new record maintains the most current information so the most important point which we need to write here each changing to a dimension generates a new dimension record and each record partition history this is done by combination of two things one is effective dating both new and old record the old record is assigned a non-active effective date and the new record is assigned a active effective date that what we just uh, checked in that particular diagram you can just look at that diagram again you will get it uh, a better understanding and assigning a new record a new surrogate key or a unique key and that's what the same thing we have written in an example manner here as well so it is very simple I'm not uh, wasting again much time on uh, discussing the same thing here <clears throat> as I said you can find the uh, uh, download link in a de video description section so you can just directly download this particular document which you can just directly read for your exams I hope uh, the points which we discussed till now are clear to you as I said, if you have any query, ping me here and for more uh, video lectures, you can just follow me on this particular channel. So in next lecture, we'll start discussing with this particular part that is virtual data warehouse and central data warehouse. Thank you.